I'm 28 years old. I think I'm one of the youngest fund managers on Wall Street. I'm a, a co-founder and managing partner of Aegis Capital Group. We are a private equity firm that manages private equity and venture capital funds. We invest into small businesses. Today I have a meeting set up with a new bank in Southport, Connecticut. I'm going up there to see if this really is a good investment opportunity for us and our fund. So about a half an hour late to meet with the president of the bank, which uh, is not a person that likes to wait very long. One of the things that makes me very unique on Wall Street is that I took an entrepreneurial risk to start my own private equity firm at the age of 26. Now I have a fund at 28 years old where we have north of $100 million under management. Brett. How are you? Steven, how are you? Yeah, good, nice to see you again. good to see you again. Pleasure. Uh, we are very much like a European style bank. We don't have tellers. We, we come in and you sit down with, a, with an executive officer. As far as what my business is, I think it's a very exciting business. You have the opportunity to work with very passionate small business owners. That's our whole focus is really to offer a private banking solution here in Fairfield County. So, uh, it's really about working with people to help make their dreams come true. Our vision is to grow this bank beyond just the town of, of Southport. We look at ourselves as a, as a regional bank. Uh, we hope to expand this footprint of this franchise from Greenwich, Connecticut, right up to Stonington, Rhode Island. At the end so, of the day, I was drilling the president on terms and doing a whole bunch of due diligence and things that are not quite so pleasant. So what's your ability going to be like to raise capital? How do you, what's your confidence in that? Well, that's a challenge for most new banks. You have how many years of combined experience? We actually have four employees right now. Your data here suggests that we have a 27.5% return. Now, on the risk profile, is I think the default rate of banks has been approximately a quarter of 1%. Well, Stephen, thank you again for your thank time. You, I appreciate it and look forward okay. to doing business with you. Look I'm pretty happy with what I wanted to accomplish today with the capacity of the management team, with the further understanding I have of the board of directors and how they all fit together. Um, so I think there's a really good chance that I'll end up investing in the bank. I grew up in a Canadian middle-class family. My dad was a high school teacher. My mother passed away of cancer when I was little. My mother's death affected me in a number of ways. One, um, it made me very independent. Starting my own private equity fund after working on Wall Street for a few years is a very independent thing to be doing. It also made me realize that life can be very short. You never know how long you're gonna live, which is why a lot of things I do with my free time are very charity focused on raising money for cancer research. It's important to be in New York within the financial capital of the world so that you can develop the relationships with the top of the top and the best schools in the world the best financial institutions in the world. You just have so much mind power here of people that can really help propel you to the top. It's been almost a three hour drive for us getting back here. We've got an early morning flight to Montreal. Um, so I have to get up at about four in the morning and I've got probably a couple hours of work to do. So it's gonna be another uh, sleepless night in New York. Glad I'm doing this while I'm young. Welcome to Aegis Capital Group's second annual venture capital pitch day. Small businesses really drive job growth in the local economies. Today I've set up a venture capital pitch day at Columbia University where we have 15 companies presenting their business ideas. Each company is looking to raise between 5 and 10 million dollars. 
and we'll have approximately 50 people in attendance that are looking to invest into these companies. What's your ideal check writing size? Ideal is three to five million. Yeah. I invest in about 15 businesses every year, so more than every month I'm investing in a company. Um, at that type of pace, you need to be filling the hopper with good investment opportunities pretty fast. Not to let anything out of the bag, but this is a very like, interesting company. There's a lot of people who are good financial analysts, there's a lot of people who do deals, but Brett has this ability to just knock things out. Like, you, you give him a task, let's say, it can be a gigantic task, and he really finds the right place on, the, on this curve of input in terms of energy versus output. You know, really maximize your returns. Looking to raise capital, looking at negotiating different contracts. Looking at I grew up in a small city called Dawson Creek. It's in northern British Columbia, 10,000 people. I left Dawson Creek after working on the oil drilling rigs for a year to save up for college. I had enough of that after a few friends of mine died actually on the job. That was enough of, a, enough of a fear factor for me to decide that that's not the lifestyle that I was looking for. So I went to McGill University, finished the top of my class, got recruited to work for Solomon Smith Barney in their investment banking practice. I'd moved down to New York and I was like, this is the place to be, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life, it was very gung-ho. Uh, about a year after not sleeping very much and getting beaten up, I'm like, wow, this is, this is a bit of a different world than I sort of anticipated. And I said, is this a lifestyle I aspire to have? And the answer really was no. So I came up with an investment thesis that I thought made a lot of sense, raised some money and got a team together to form my own private equity company. I see a lot of people living their lives that are not very exciting, not very fulfilling. And I said, why not try to create a life that you dream of? When I get back from Egypt, what we'll do is we'll have a little marketing campaign specifically targeted towards hotels. After this, I'm going to be flying uh, off to Cairo to have a little bit of a recruiting powwow, if you will. And that's for 2.30, right? I just want to confirm that the car's on time. Thank you very much. An hour to get to my apartment, get my suit off, change into other clothes, take a car down to JFK, and then hopefully make my flight. When I get back, why don't we we'll go through these? Great to see you. When I'm back, let's sit down for lunch. And you guys should as well chat. As I'm expanding my business, I'm looking to hire somebody from a major investment bank in London. Right. Reconfirm for me that we will, in fact, be there. I'm okay. going to meet him in Egypt in order to get to know him better on both a personal and a professional level. Typical Manhattan, the traffic's horrible. I'm running pretty pressed for time. There's only one direct flight to Cairo every day, so I think given the traffic, I'm going to see if I can get a helicopter to take a ride out to JFK. Hi, this is Brett Hickey calling. I want to see if you have any uh, flights leaving to uh, JFK um, in about 45 minutes from now? Yes, for one passenger. Perfect, thank you. We'll be there uh, in about 45 minutes then. Thank you. So, we're in luck. We got a helicopter. The big issue is now if we miss the helicopter, there's absolutely no way we'll be able to drive to JFK in time.